right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for coming to our presentation today about improving our student review process um, and for submitting our WooClap to see kind of how everybody's doing. If we're a little bit meh, hopefully we'll be a little bit more interactive in this presentation and you can have a opportunity an opportunity to decide which way we go in this in this process so a little bit about us so i'm lisa kidder i am the quality plus program manager i manage a team of uh, five instructional designers we work in a place called the instructional technology resource center we are not a center for teacher learning we are not it we're somewhere in the middle and we do everything above so um, we do a little bit of everything um, feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Um, we know that this process, we're going to kind of hit and miss as we go through. Um, and if you want more details, we'd be happy to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. So feel free to take our information down and reach out to us later. I'm a senior instructional tech designer now, excuse me, senior instructional designer on the team with Lisa Kidder at the ITRC. And I've been working at the ITRC since 2018, but I've been working as an instructional technologist since probably 2007. So I've been doing this for a little while and I really enjoy it. I feel like I found my passion. And so just to give you a little bird's eye view of what we're talking about today, we as Lisa mentioned, work at the Instructional Technology Resource Center, and our implementation of Quality Matters is the Quality Plus program at Idaho State University, and it is a faculty-driven program, so they come to us when they would like to be a part of it. We have three different levels within the program, so we have an essentials level, certification level, and the teaching online certificate, and so all of these levels are tied to faculty professional development. The essentials level is called that because it is the essential standards of the Quality Matters rubric. The certification level then is an external peer review from Quality Matters. And then the teaching online certificate is when faculty complete all successfully complete all of the courses for the teaching online certificate. Uh, again, it is faculty driven, so we don't have a mandate that they have to come to us and take our program in order to teach online or anything like that. But based on faculty recommendation, we, we became subscribers of Quality Matters. And part of our process with the essentials level is getting student involvement. And so we are very fortunate enough where we are that we have the funding to have student employees. So we can take four to seven of those student workers and get their perspective on those standards, those specific review standards that have to do with the student perspective. So as our employees, they have never been in this course, they can provide that fresh perspective of having never opened this course to see whether or not they can see how to get started, um, whether things are clear for the expectations, if the technical support is there. And so they reviewed this, these 18 specific review standards that are then combined into a final report, which is also reviewed by two full-time staff members who double check it for grammar and spelling and also for professionalism because we want, although the students are not providing helpful recommendations necessarily, they still need to be professional in the feedback that they are providing for faculty. And so this helps us to, that report gets sent to the instructional design partner who works with the faculty through the program and then the faculty and they work through it to continuously improve their course based on the recommendations that they get from the students, because I'm sure you're all familiar with the student voices being louder sometimes than an instructional designer. So faculty tend to listen to students. So we're very fortunate that we have that opportunity. So for this presentation, we, we're hoping that we can help you identify opportunities to include students in a QM review implementation or a QM implementation process as well as review the implementation management plan to provide student perspectives to faculty, and then simulate training students to provide guided feedback on some specific review standards. And so with that, what we'd like you to do is go ahead and open that WooClap again if you don't still have it open, and let us know which way you would like this presentation to go. So if you're more interested in managing the process or training the students, you can assign more points out of the 100 points that are there for you to attribute to those different pieces. Um, you would just assign more points to those pieces that you want to cover first. And that way you get to decide which way we go today. 
So we'll give you a few minutes. I'll keep an eye on that. Oh, I do. Thank you. <laughs> Unless you want to tell us how you're feeling still. You still feeling meh? <laughs> Okay, there you go. You should have um, options now to assign point values to the different aspects. And I don't know, Lisa, do you want them to interrupt us with questions or hold questions or? They can yeah. interrupt us with questions. Feel free to interrupt us with any questions you may have throughout this because we welcome questions and insight. And those of you connecting virtually, make sure that you put in your preference. Basically, you're going to direct how we proceed and where we spend the bulk of our time. Ooh, it's, ooh, it's managing the process is first so far. Um, what? Right. Should we just give a, we'll give you another minute just in case. I guess I can see. Well, we don't quite have all of the people responding yet, so I'll give you a little bit more time. Current top of the list is managing the process, mm -hmm. followed by training the students. Oh, selecting specific reviews is catching up. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Oh. <laughs> and we'll do our best as just time allows to go over any of the other parts as well. We just thought it would be nice for you to choose the route we take. Wow. All right, I think managing the process uh, is That's top of the first. list. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for a second. Selecting. This is kind of what we thought it would be. Managing the process, selecting specific review standards, training the students, and then finding students would be. Mm -hmm. That was what I hypothesized. <laughs> <laughs> so I think... Let's go in that order. So yeah. Sasha, go ahead and start yeah. us off we'll go with ahead and go in that order. Managing the process. Okay, so let me bring my oh, orange. Mm, you're yes, orange. Three. First I have to find the mouse up there. Okay. So we're gonna go to managing the process. So the kind of thirty thousand foot view of our process. I don't know if you'll be able to read that back there. Um, we have about, we have five steps. So we have requesting the student review, creating templates and assigning students to the review, the students review. And then again, they have their comments reviewed and the final report is created. So what we do is the instructional design partner who was working with the faculty determines when the course is ready for student review. So what we try to do is ensure that they have a completed alignment map as a blueprint for their course. And then they have a matching course in our learning management system, Moodle. And we also try to make sure that their objectives are measurable and they have alignment between their objectives, their instructional materials and their assessments before it moves into the student review process. So templates, we use templates for um, tracking the student reviews as well as the students filling out their comments. We use Google Sheets, we're a Google school. And then during that review, that's when students do their review and they go through the course looking at those 18 specific review standards. And Lisa will talk a little bit more about guiding the students on how, how they enter their comments. Um, then again, two full-time staff members, Lisa and our front desk manager. So the, the person who manages the front desk students review the student comments for grammar and spelling and accuracy and professionalism. And then that final report is created. So this is actually an improvement to what we've done in the past because we in the past had more manual processes. So it was a mail merge, I think, and a lot of manual work had to be done with what the students entered and getting that final report to the faculty. So now we've kind of streamlined the process into these different apps. We are Google School again. So we have Google Sheets, we have Google Docs, we have an apps script. And Pipeify is a workflow management system that we use to help us track it. It integrates with our university's ticketing system. So that helps us to initiate 
the tickets with the students so that they can start the review as well as close them out. And then we also keep track of the cards. It's a Kanban sort of approach. And so we can keep track of each faculty member's card as it goes through the different processes for the phase of the Quality Plus program that they are in. And the Google Sheet is where we collect the students' responses again and how it's tracked. The app script, we are again very fortunate to have one of our LMS administrators who is able to do some coding and wrote this app script for us so that we could generate a report from within the Google Sheet directly into a Google document so it would actually look nice, be readable for the faculty, and not be a jumble or something where at least I had to go in and deal with mail merge applications to try and get things pushed from Google Sheets to Word for the faculty. Um, what else? The Google Docs, and I guess I should probably open up the templates. They are they are available in our resources folder, which is here. So this will be at our very last slide has a link to this resources folder that you're welcome to look at and use, make copies of. Um, Again, we have the tracking students, and that is a Google Sheet. And so we come in here while well, Lisa comes in here. <laughs> when she gets a request within Pipeify, she comes into the tracking sheet. She enters the faculty's name and a link to their course, as well as when their spreadsheet is created and links to the student review spreadsheet. And so this is, again, how we, we keep track of where the students are. They'll leave a comment when they're ready to have someone review their work. And then Oh, I think I can show. Is it extensions? So those, those are the extensions. These are the student employees, actually. And what will happen is they will. I'm having a hard time here. Am I? Oh, I'm right clicking. That's why. Sorry. <laughs> I'm also an Apple person most of the time, but. Um, good. I should be able to do this. I do work on Adele as well. Um, so here is the template for the students. So what they do is they come in and claim a sheet and they rename it with their name. And so on that other one, that's tracking the students and where they are in the process. The ratings and the all tab are typically hidden from students. It's really not for them. It's for us to pull things together. And the all pulls everything from all of their sheets into one and is a lot of information that they don't necessarily need. So we typically keep those hidden from them, but it's where all the formulas are to pull everything together. And then the report tab here is where that app script comes into play because when we select it, we now have the ability to generate a report and we've created it with different templates for four, five, and six, four, five, six, and seven students. So depending on the number of students we have doing the review, we can automatically generate a report for the number of students that we have. And we've, I've got it here, but I don't think I've got it pointing to the right place. So this is the template. Just open. No. So this is basically the template and you can see here that it's got the A's a1 all cell is where it's going to pull the course name into this sheet. And then everything within here that has the double brackets is basically coming from that Google sheet. So the template is set up with links for them to jump to specific sections of this if they want to. So that if they see that one says needs review or needs or has suggestions, they can jump to that specific section. And we've included a way for them to have highlights and suggestions. So we like students to be able to give them both the good and the bad, right? So we want them to make sure that they note anything that's a real highlight in the course as well. And then I mentioned that Pipeify is really how we tie it all in together. And so I think that's really how we manage the process. Do you have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. We're We're virtual, so Use the mic if you have questions. Please. Right. Lost Sorry, time. virtual <laughs> humans. Um, I hate the sound of my own voice. It's awful. Mine too. Um, <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> so, so okay. So, how many student reviewers do you have in total? 
And how do you know if a course, if you have four to six reviewers on a course, how is that determined? And are, are do all of your student workers, are they from that academic unit or not? It seems like you wouldn't want to have them in from the academic unit. So just talk more generally about that. Sure. Generally, we have anywhere from <clears throat> seven to 10 student workers. So um, at a time, uh, seven has been the top most recently. Um, when we first train them, everybody does the review. But ideally, for once everybody's been trained, we want three to four students. Three students is about the minimum. Um, four gives me the option, because I create the final report, to delete anything that needs to be deleted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, that also gives us some wiggle room, too. So, for example, um, currently we have a student in, in the nursing program. So, as a student worker, if a nursing faculty calls in, she hands off the call to somebody else. Same thing happens here. So if it's on your schedule or um, you feel uncomfortable for any reason, um, the course that they're actually reviewing is what we call a development course. There's no students in it. It's not a live course, so we don't have issues with that. Um, and that's where, um, so I manage the quality plus program side and then Rick manages the students. So the two of us coordinate in terms of how to do this, work with the students, do the training, do the retraining, and the retraining, and the retraining. <laughs> Did that help? Because it's not necessarily always perfect uh, on the first try or the second try. The more they do it, the better it goes. And the same is true of an official. Absolutely. And we have just had some turnover, and so we get that too. Sometimes we'll get students who stay for a while, and other times they're there for a semester and then gone. And sometimes they come back after a semester, but um, it also depends on the students and how long they've been there and other projects they have going on as well. Yes. I have a question from uh, the virtual land. Absolutely. The um, uh, question was, curious why you've essentially recreated the, oh, he went away, come back. Recreated the features of QM uh, CRMS or the customizable my CR, what prompted you to discard that tool and build something from scratch? Has to do with our students. So these are students. So we don't um, what have the students don't have my QM accounts um, and we need to use tools that they're familiar with and can get into quickly. Um, so we do use the my CR for our essential reviews that are done by um, full-time staff that have a my QM account. So, and yeah, we could adjust it to just the 18 standards. Um, this is what we've come up with. Mm -hmm. If you have suggestions, we're totally welcome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> are there guest accounts that we can have for the students or something like that? That would be all right. Um, and the other thing is, is this is this is a milestone within our essentials level, right? So we have the development course, we have the blueprint for the course with the course alignment map, and then we get the student feedback. And one place where we've found we needed to improve our process was with the student review. So once at one point we kind of had a bottleneck with the development of courses when we're working with faculty because we wanted it to be perfect before it even got to the student review point. And so the students not necessarily took for granted that everything should already be there and be in place and kind of didn't look for it as much because they assumed it would be there and be in certain places. So what we've done is kind of stepped back and said, with faculty, if you've been teaching this course a certain way, let's get it into student review right now, see what they think of how you've been teaching it. And then that will give us some, some starting points, some jumping off points to continue the development process with that student perspective in mind first. And that has helped, I think, to relieve some of the bottleneck that we've had in the past. But once it goes through this student review and the instructional design partner works with the faculty, then we can move again during that time, we also have an accessibility check. So we're checking for captions and we're checking for um, accessible documents and things like that in the meantime. And then once we have everything put together, we try to get that final product to one of our full-time instructional designers who then does a review of the essential standards in the my CRM or my, 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 CR. my CR. And then there's the other one, CRMS. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions at that point on the management? If you'd like, we'd be happy to meet with you 
and connect and go deeper into copies of the script and things like that. We're totally willing to share. So we said selecting SRS is next, right? Yep. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is a process that um, we've gone through several iterations. It happens every time the rubric's revised. Um, I'll step back. The student perspective was requested from our initial faculty that recommended that we adopt Quality Matters. So all the pieces of our Quality Plus program came out of the some pilot programs and uh, things that so their faculty requested. Um, so they wanted that student's perspective. So first, we just took all the standards that said from a student perspective. That's what we started with. <laughs> That was easy, and, you know, general standards one and seven, those are easy to, to, to check. Um, also, can the students actually review? Um, we would rather have an instructional designer assess the uh, measurability of outcomes than a student. Um, anything where there was kind of like a yes, it's there or no is another guideline that we used. Um, and we also provided additional list of guidance for the students. So. Um, they have access to the Quality Matters workbook that they have, and a lot of them do go in and read the annotations, but we kind of summarize some of the things that we want them to focus on. Um, and then we've continually collected feedback from all, we talk all the time <laughs> because we're a team. And so what's working, what's not, what do you struggle with? The faculty do listen to the students much better, which is why we have the two um, reviews. So Rick reviews, he manages the students, he reviews them as they finish them. And then I put pull the report using the script and I review it again. We have all had faculty members um, in tears, upset, anxious. I did have a faculty quit um, the Quality Plus program. So um, the instructional designer gets the report and then makes the meeting with them. So that's where some of that feedback comes from. So when we moved from fifth to sixth edition, we kind of stopped and reassessed and we went through all of them and talked about what we did. So this was what we originally selected and that's what we moved to in the sixth edition. Those are our current 18. And uh, when the seventh edition comes out in the summer, we will go through this process again. Um, and we're constantly collecting feedback and also where we want to kind of push faculty and guide them as well. Um, so this is something that we keep track of. Um, here is some guidance that you can see. So we do ask them to look at 2.3. Is it clear? From Are, are the outcomes clear? Um, so we don't do the measurability, but, you know, did you find them? Um, were they easy to find? Um, do you understand what they say? Or is there a lot of jargon in there? Um, any terms that are confusing? 33.2, can you tell how your final grade is gonna be calculated? We kind of summed it up in that student language to kind of guide them in terms of this. Um, so, we have some that have more holistic. We do want them to look at 8.1 and 8.2, which the whole rubric is holistic. It's not a checklist. It is supposed to be a holistic review. That's hard for students. That's why we had lots of checklists, but we went through 8.1 and 8.2 as a team and it took us probably about six weeks, almost two, two months where we dug deep into the annotations and say, what can we narrow this down to? And so this is what we decided to have the students look at. It's still a holistic uh, view. But like for 8.2, um, where is, or is it 8.1? 8.1, when they mention midterm, it, does it always say midterm or do they go midterm and then exam one? You know, some of those types of discrepancies that could cause confusion in navigation and getting through the course. The question um, was, you're asking, do we have them look at the mobile app or a web browser? Yeah, or... if it's easy to use across platforms and devices. We don't, we don't currently have that, but that might be a good suggestion to throw some things in. Um, so, all right, 
microphone. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I tried to repeat the question so that those folks listening online could hear. I thought you did a great job. Can you hear me? Okay, good. So um, I think this is really unique and innovative. So I just, I wanted to congratulate you on that. How many, so first question, are their reviews included in your formal review? Or do those 18 standards get reviewed again by someone else? That's question one, and then I have a follow-up. The 18, let's see, I'm going to go back. Um, so these are the 18 standards that we felt that the students could easily review. They are not all essential. So we're trying to, okay, here's our essential. We're pointing to our essentials and let's stretch you a little bit. So we kind of stretch a bit. The essential standards do get reviewed. That's the culminating of the quality plus essentials. But we don't necessarily have a second person okay. review the ones that are not essential. So do you have, but you do have your faculty go through a certified review or they have the option or no? They have the option. Okay. That is our second level in our, in, in the quality plus program. We have right. the three different levels. So we have essentials and their course has to go through essentials first, be taught at least one more semester, and then they can apply for the certification. And does this happen in the essentials? That's where I was just trying to follow it. Does yes. the student review happens in the essentials? How many courses go through a student review in a semester? Depends on our turnover for students. And <laughs> you know, I, I don't have that number. Um, but faculty take their time. So faculty derive this process. Faculty can take anywhere from, I think, nine months is about the pro general process time because life happens and teaching and all of those things. Um, so I would probably say we can... We usually do somewhere between, I would say about 12 a semester, um, which is about similar to, we we can do about 14 course reviews um, in an academic year. As, as So our essentials were getting, we did 22 last academic year. Well, and I think the student reviews take approximately three to four weeks usually when they've been when they're trained and experienced at it. They've been getting quicker. Have they? So, so we, we I would say this group that we have right now, um, they can do about a two week turnaround. They're not working full time. So some of them work you know, two hours on Monday, <laughs> five hours on Wednesday. Uh, you had a question microphone. <laughs> How are they, how are the students compensated and what is their motivation for participating? <laughs> it's part of their job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they get paid. <laughs> if they're student, a, a lot of times I think their uh, student employees are on the. Study. Yes, work study. Thank but, you. <laughs> so it's like, there's a, there's a job with the description that you advertise for and hire students for. Yes. So they're, they're general support. So we have. We have students that answer the phone. So okay. they're our frontline support. Um, for the so, so this is one aspect of their job, not their whole job. Exactly. Correct. Okay. My call. Go ahead. In terms of grads and undergrads, we have all sorts of students. So can I, can I ask, um, do you specify or do you pull students from certain um, uh, like business or English or something to, of that matter? We take them from anywhere. We've tried to be specific yeah. and that has not worked. So we'll take you if you can have good customer service. That is our number one. I have a virtual question. Okay. All right. <laughs> this was a follow up. Follow up uh, to, I think you mentioned that you had some faculty that were quitting this process. Um, what was the stressor that pushed them to opt out? Um, so we, we have a bit more checks in the process now. Um, and so in our old process, again, this was improving our student review process. Previously, we have a Google folder and I would dump the, in the report in the folder and let both the ID and the faculty know. So, um, the faculty had a lot of, uh, 
unique ways of approaching things that were very different, um, worked in her mind, um, but didn't quite um, translate to an easily navigable course. And um, I did not do as much of a uh, professionalism check at that time. And so, because it was a lot more manual process. So um, she saw it without the instructional designer and it came at a bad time. And she's like, I'm, I'm not doing anything different. I'm done. So we have another question up here. So as a result of that, I do more professionalism <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> and we as instructional designers try to frame it with the faculty too. And, and now the instructional designer gets the report and reviews it and then comes to the meeting, so. Do students know who the instructor is and do the, does the instructor know who the student is that does the review? Like do they, or is it more anonymous? The students know um, okay. because the instructor's names all over the course, um, but the instructor does not know the students. That's kept anonymous. Have have any of the faculty expressed concerns about having students in a course in a way that like it jeopardizes their exam security or like if these students can see these assignments, they'll just sell my content to other students. Do you, have you had any of those kinds of concerns? I think I've had a question about that once. Um, as part of our onboarding process with the students, the students do sign an agreement and that's where Rick, he manages the students directly, is directly involved um, with this process so that not just this process, but anything that they do um, were watched and there are FERPA considerations and yeah. 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 And yes, we have had to let some students go. So, but we kind of monitor and watch that. You let them go to the class or the job, the job. <laughs> yeah, the job. I just asked if they let the students go from the, the college or, or just the job. It's just the job. So, cause we try to catch it early and if we see them doing anything, then and they're, you know, you go through the normal process. So you give them a reprimand. And if not, then thank you. You're done here. <laughs> so. Great questions, though. These are great. Um, OK, where are we at? I know we have about 15 minutes left. Any more questions on how we selected the standards or how we guide the students? Those prompt questions are fantastic for the students. and. I think in the training, the students, we have an example of how they rate things so that we can um, provide that feedback to the students. All right. Student Where's that out of the rating? <laughs> Sorry, it's <laughs> next. Do the rating next. Student training next. Okay, good. <laughs> good one. Uh, good segue, right? Let's go. So this is an example training that's done with the students. In fact, this was done on the 3rd of October with the new group of students that we had. So we basically go in and we tell them why they're doing this, give them the relevance of why this is important. Your voice is important. Faculty listen to you and they want to hear from you. Um, many of the standards have that from a student perspective phrase in them. And so we want to get that in here for faculty. It also provides that checkpoint for our faculty in the Quality Plus program so we can keep them moving and keep them motivated to continue. Um, and then we want them to draw upon their expertise experiences as a student, but also make connections to those standards. So this is a, this training is a way to help them connect to those standards. So again, we have a ticketing system. Once the instructional designer and the faculty have come to the point where the course is ready for the student review, we submit that in Pipeify and Lisa gets it, it automatically creates a ticket in our ticketing system, it's TD Next. And then it gives them a link to the course, the course name, it gives them instructions and, it, and a link to the spreadsheet that they're going to complete. Again, this is the tracking spreadsheet that has a link to the course and then a link to the actual review spreadsheet and where they will put their names. And I don't know if they'll, if they'll hear me, but they can say it's ready for review once Lance it used to be Lance's account, Rick. Once he's reviewed it, he can put that it's done and put his initials. Someone else has said, I'm taking this course. I can't review it. So they've opted out. We won't let them take it, review it. 
So again, they can add a comment in the Google Sheet that goes to Lisa or to Rick to say, I'm done with it. You need to come in and double check it for me, please. IP is in progress, ready for review. Review is read comments and revise, and then done if they finish their part, because Rick will tell them it's done. This is again, the review spreadsheet, and we can see the tabs with the student names across the bottom. So they each get their own tab within the Google Sheet, and we have the standards on there and those prompting questions again, so that it puts it into their, um, into their language really, so that they're not actually having to look at the annotations and stuff. It's just, is it clear? Do you know where to find it? Do you know how you're going to calculate a grade if you were a student in here? Um, so this gives them the instructions for renaming the sheet. They go in there when they go in, when the template's created, it just says student, I think, or student one, student two, student three on the tabs. So they come in and they claim their tab by putting their name on it, renaming it to theirs. And then they complete the spreadsheet for each row and use those prompts. And they do have access to the Quality Matters Workbook. And we always welcome questions from students. If they're ever unclear about anything, they, we try to be as approachable as possible so that they will come to us and ask if they're concerned about anything. Again, we ask them to indicate where they found the information and how clear it was, if there's anything especially good that they can tell the instructor, and what questions they would have for faculty, which will be the suggestions for improvement. So um, this is our ratings, the one to five, zero if you can't find it. And here is how we suggest they use those ratings, right? One is not at all clear. I'm not even sure what questions to ask because I have no idea. And it's kind of equivalent to a D minus. And I hope none of my courses ever do this like this. That's basically what I'm thinking when I find something like that. Two is a bit vague. I have some questions. Um, three is okay. I get some of the expectations. Four is clear. I generally know what to expect. And five is very clear. And I wish all of my classes would do this. So that's one of those kind of how they can go on the continuum. And I'll, I'll interrupt. We do have zero. So if they can't find it, that's what the zero is reserved for. Mm -hmm. So there we go from the D minus to the A. Every cell should have, yes. Oh, you need a microphone. Sorry. <laughs> and just to clarify that the faculty is not getting the letter grade. No. They're getting just the rating. Mm -hmm. They don't even get that. Yeah, we'll show you how, we'll show you how the ratings are culminated into that final report. So it's not even really just a rating scale or, or equivalent to a letter grade. Um, but it's important that every cell has something so that we know that they didn't miss anything. Right. And so this is just showing that we've got two dashes here. And then again, they've got their rating column. Sorry. No sound. Is it okay? Was I just too far away? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you have a question from them? Sorry. I went back to the top of the chat where they said there was no sound. That's why. Oh. That's why. So that was my bad. Because <laughs> I was trying to get these questions. Um, one question was because the because the students can see each other's reviews, um, any concerns about students working together, echoing each other rather than independent reviews? We've had a couple of that. And so that's where Rick and I coordinate and do retraining. Um, and, and that's where if one student doesn't find something, that's okay. So it's just like in a course review. If one reviewer doesn't find something and the other two do, there's a conversation that happens around that. So um, Rick and I monitor that. Um, we did have a three students who were in the same program and they were really good thing. friends <laughs> and so they would sometimes do some copying and so we just did some retraining and redirecting so yeah so i think earlier you mentioned that once the students are really used to the process and well trained that it's like a two week turnaround time how many how many work hours is that typically good question <laughs> That's a good question Thanks. for me to gather. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't have an answer for you. I was keeping. Notes. Okay, great. Thanks for nothing then. <laughs> Thanks. For You've been no help at all. It's cool. I'm going to email you. We're going to be friends. Good. Good.
So I have two questions. Um, once students get the hang of this, does it improve their academic standing or success? And what do they have they expressed to other in their other courses that faculty maybe need to have their courses reviewed? <laughs> this the latter for sure. Yes. But I don't know if you've done it, but there's been a couple of times that are like, can you please reach out to Professor So and So? And it's like. Why don't you recommend that? <laughs> Why don't so. you tell them, hey, I work at the ITRC and I've seen some courses come through this process and hey, you can get a stipend too if you do. It. And in terms of your first question, in terms of the student academic standing, um, I don't have any data on that one, but looking at some of our past students, um, some of the things that we have seen is because they work for us, they get skilled in technology. So even though they're in health, they got a job immediately because they're comfortable with the technology. They learn the customer service. And one of our former students now works for us. That's, that was going to be my question. If, <laughs> if any of them have been inspired to become instructional designers. I yes. am proof of that, actually. Yes, that's because what, I started at the ITRC in the fall of 2004 as a student employee. And then it just, I fell into it. it I didn't even know yeah. it was a profession. I started I as a grad student. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Another question online. Uh, question online. I think that's echoes some of these. How long has this been going? How long have you been doing this? And then the follow up, I mean, I think it goes to some of the data. This was asked by someone who loves data. What themes have you seen emerging over time from a student view? So, we piloted our process in summer of 2016. Um, and that's, so we, we asked a department to kind of help us get that first process established. So we've been doing it since then. Um, in terms of themes, um, I'm, I haven't collected any data, but that's a good thing for us to, as to far look as at. like student concerns with courses or what they've found in the courses thematically. Yeah. I think they're sort of like, what themes have you found from there going through the reviews? What have, like, what has needed? updating or readability taking. for sure and <laughs> ease of use i would say um, at 8.2 yeah those are two of the main ones i think from the student perspective um even interviewing students i think that was a, like so follow up interviewing the students or no we, we haven't but i made a note that's a great data collection point maybe next year in <laughs> minneapolis we'll report on <laughs> and and you asked for reviews. We have a new student. So like all of the retraining lists is in my head at the moment. <laughs> well, I know we have about five minutes. So I just, you know, these are the guidelines that we give the students to be professional and talk about the course, not the instructor, right? We're not trying to attack the instructor. It's not that they're, that they're a bad teacher. It's just that they need a little bit of guidance and how to deliver online, right? Um, using complete sentences and correct grammar and just run spell check. I mean, it doesn't catch everything. Sometimes it's a word, just not the right word you're looking for. <laughs> and then this is an example of the final report. So it's aggregated into bullet lists with the highlights and the suggestions or comments. And this is why it's important that they not include empty cells because we just at least need to know that they put something there. Um, and the ratings, uh, oh, is that it? We didn't show the ratings. You, there's an example of a final report in the folder. Yeah. So. The ratings basically say, um, looks good, um, review suggestions. Um, so we give them qualitative feedback on that as opposed to a number score. And I think there was one slide on here that showed um, where we had the jumps. I think it was the template that I showed. When we have the jumps to the specific sections, that's where it's the needs, yeah. needs work. And that's, yeah, we're in a different one. <laughs> I just escaped from that thing. Any more questions? Yes. Just one from virtual and what specific qualifications do you look for for hiring these students to to review the courses or all the things? All the work they do. So um, that would be a question for Rick. Um, feel free to reach out to me or Sasha. So Lisa Kidder at isu.edu, Sasha Johnson at isu.edu and we can connect you with Rick. He's actually established a new hiring process, which I'm not um, clear on at the moment, but I'd be happy to connect you with him. Yeah, and our contact information, our email addresses are on one of the few first slides. So you're welcome to reach out to us anytime. 
And this is the example of the what our ratings are. So good review suggestions, not found. And you can also see the formulas if you are interested. <laughs> and now they're calculated. <laughs> Yeah, if you really want to get geeky into the process, then oh. Sasha's a good one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the formulas. I love formulas in Excel and It'd be Google Sheets. But... First one. Yeah. I guess we didn't actually talk about finding the students, did we? Um, I think we're just at about... time. Yeah. So we just do flyers, ISU Today, well, not ISU Today announcements. The students have their own announcements um, that we use. But yeah, we're trying to get career path interns in to help us too. Oh. I'd say jump to the last slide that has the, so the, in the conference, all of this is there. Um, cool. there. And we do have a bunch of resources, like those examples and things are all in there. And um, feel free to reach out with us. Um, we've met with a couple of other institutions and just kind of talked through a bit more about the process. So it's been really, really helpful um, in getting that student voice in. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is this the thing you will grab from the previous session? No. No. <laughs> this <laughs> one's try. No. This one's done. <laughs> this one has my been. previous one is not. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Don't forget to fill out your session evaluations. And thank you. I forgot what you said about how many you were going to get this semester about.